front of you lies three cubes. Three cubes of different moves. A three by three whose faces turn. A dino cube whose corners churn. But that which pains ye most, I allege, is thus the curvy copter's jumbling edge. Jumbling puzzles, die right. My history with bandaging jumbling puzzles has been a bit rough. Seven-ish years ago, I got my hands on a curvy copter and never solved it until a year ago. And then we were cursed to review the Morpho Helenor Octavia, which... But now, it's time for the next level up. Welcome to the world of the Andromeda Cube. Designed by David Pitcher, the Andromeda Cube is a confusing puzzle at first sight, and even more mind-boggling when you start to dig deeper. Packed with 24 axes of rotation, and with cuts running every which way, this puzzle is in a league of its own. Really, it is in a league of its own. What the Andromeda Cube really is, is a cubic shape modification of a pentagonal icosatetrahedron shape. You got that? Yes, a pentagonal icosatetrahedron tetrahedron, which is a 24-sided shape where each face is a pentagon. A face-turning puzzle based off of this design was made in 2011 by Brian Binter, but it was never mass-produced. Um, so now we got this cubic form, which we somehow have to make sense of. So if we want to be able to solve this, then we're going to have to dig deep and figure out how this thing works. So here we have the, the puzzle. And here we have the puzzle with only the pentagon shaped centers, all 24 of them. Each of these would be a center on a side of a normal 24 sided pentagonal icosatetrahedron. So now we have everything put back together here. We can still see these kind of pentagon shaped centerpieces, four of them on each side. And if we imagine those as our centerpieces, it makes sense when we start to twist it. Here we go. Each of these slices that can turn is just a side of a, you know, what, what was it called? So while it looks pretty in cubic at this point, the funny thing about this puzzle is there's no way to scramble it or progress at all without jumbling. So let's get two sides, stroke axes to interact with each other here. Uh, see what's going on so we'll take this one and the one adjacent to it here so if each of these sides is a pentagon in reality we should have five options here we obviously have you know this option right here if we turn the top layer once yes we can see a cut form through here so we can now if we try hard enough turn yes let's find another slice that works this puzzle's a little stiff by the way but that should be fine enough. I mean, depending on how long this actually takes to solve, then my fingers might be pretty swole by the end of this, or just destroyed. Anyway, first cut, second cut, cut number three. There we go. Number four, line it up there. Yes, and number five, probably our last one. Running through here. Yes, and bring it home. There we go. So that was just two of the 24 axes interacting with each other there it's going to be very interesting to see how far we can actually get before it becomes too jumbled to actually do anything with do i actually think i'll be able to solve this i don't know we're, we're gonna do it somehow is there a tutorial online in case i fail on my own i don't know we'll find out you know no i don't think we will we don't need tutorials where we're going we have intellect we have you have to, everyone knows you have to have a high IQ to be a good Q. All right, well, I guess we got to scramble this thing at some point, don't we? A little uh, spoiler alert here. I've uh, attempted scrambling just three sides of this to kind of get, you know, just a gist of how it works. Uh, let me just, let me just, let me just, let me just say, it's never a good sign when it's a challenge just to scramble the puzzle correctly. It becomes bandaged so quick. So this thing is going to, that's also a slight problem, but we'll get past that. So each one of those five slice options we just talked about is gonna jumble this thing. And if we jumble right away, we're not gonna get 
much scrambling done. If I kind of demonstrate what I mean here, you can see like this kind of one by three slice over here. It's kind of stayed together. We can break it up a little bit more, but it's gonna be tough to, you know, break these two up and these two up as it becomes more banded. So we're gonna try to get back to where we were and experiment a little bit. Okay, we're gonna move pieces around the puzzle without jumbling it. Essentially jumble to not jumble. Uh -huh. Let's find those three sides here. Can like maybe make a commutator that might be useful later. Oh, there we go. You see what I mean? That was easy. I remember everything I did there and we're gonna keep doing that exact same thing that I remember what I just did. Just around the puzzle a little bit. Get it all sort of messed up. That might be coming a slight problem. Okay, uh, what I've done here is made what we call in the trade a error and was not thinking hard about what I was doing and got lost and well, onto the jumbling stage. I hate this sort of thing. Now this puzzle has quite a few situations where there's times when it looks like the puzzle's bandaged, but you can kind of force it to turn. This is kind of one right here. So we're looking at this right here. We can see we want to turn this right here. We can see it's moving, but this red and this white piece are really butting up against each other. But we can kind of cheese it like that and get it to go through, but it's gonna lock up on that. And here's another one, look right here in the middle. I wanna turn this right here, but there's this little white triangle poking out here, kind of preventing me from doing that, but I can really, if I want, kind of do it. This one, this one's not, this one, that one's not as doable. There's no way I am at the end of the road. A lot of stuff is fighting me, does not want to turn. I'm gonna make it happen. We do thorough and proper scrambles on this channel. This piece is stopping me kind of from... I'm gonna put that back before that explodes. I've been fiddling for a while and I can't get anywhere else. I don't even know how I'm supposed to begin to get this back to where it was. We got some pretty decent scrambles like right on this hemisphere, but opposite it's uh, lackluster, but nothing's going anywhere. So. It's time to attempt to solve this, isn't it? And we're screwed. No, we're not. No, we're not. We got this. We can do this all on our own. Absolutely no help. With our intellect and mind power, we can overcome anything. Even this absolute conglomerate atrocity. All right. Okay, so I'm in the first stages here where I'm just kind of trying to get it kind of back into cubic form, not all the way back into cubic form. I don't think that'll be efficient. First priority is just getting this thing to a point where we can actually turn more because it's still really locked up. And then, and then we'll work from there and see what happens. All right, so we're about 45 minutes into the solve here and why don't you just take a look at how far we've come, except we haven't come far at all, have we? Look at that. I was just making too much progress on this hemisphere right here, and as soon as I got to this side, problem. Big, big problem. And what is this problem I speak of and you ask of right here, right now? This. A broken piece already. I must have turned the puzzle in some way that it didn't quite want to turn. You know, the bandaging gets, you know, very confusing. I have not been able to find the tiny little piece that broke off because it's just so small. So it's either going to fit in there or I'm going to have to modify it some way or another to make it work. All right, we'll keep going. We'll do the best we can. I want to defeat this thing. I'm not going to let this defeat me. Not like, not like the last one. Uh, so yeah, we did it. How long do you think that took uh, after our 45 minute checkup earlier? Looked like we were about halfway done, so maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour or two. Nine hours. Nine hours is how long it took to complete this puzzle. All right, let's 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 talk about the Andromeda Cube. Some of the some of the good, some of the bad, some of the ugly, some of the 
anguish. Let's get the bad out of the way so I can end on a good note later on. The actual puzzle, the construction of the puzzle is good. I didn't have any issues besides the initial edge piece which broke which didn't really even pop out too much throughout the solve so that's that's cool. The only real complaint here is all the caps popping off so frequently especially when we were in the very jumbled stage caps were popping off pretty much every single turn. Although it would take a while I do recommend loosening up the puzzle if you're gonna get one yourself because turning the uh, puzzle when it's tight for 10 hours. Ended up also digging out some weight for that's maybe six, seven years old. So that kind of did the trick and smoothed everything up for us. So the construction and the function of the Andromeda Cube is good. What I didn't like was predictably the bandaging. Bandaging was plentiful and compared to any other bandaging puzzle I've solved, an absolute nightmare. This puzzle has two different kinds of bandaging. First of all, we have normal jumbling bandaging. This jumbling bandaging is mostly thanks to these little triangle looking pieces around the center here, which are actually corners on a normal. So let's move some things around, get the gist of how these triangles impact our solving experience. It looks like we've made a cut that can work all the way around through here, this curve until we hit Ah, uh, that white triangle right there. We can try to turn this as much as we want, but obviously with that in the way, it's just not happening. So with just that jumbling bandaging alone, a lot of the moves that we want to do during a solve or a lot of the desired commutators and algorithms we're used to using are rendered completely useless a lot of the time. So let's take something as simple as like a commutator we learn as beginners, R prime, D prime, R, D, which helps us rotate corners. Now we can use this to rotate most of the corners on this kind of puzzle here, but with the bandaging of those triangles, it makes it impossible a lot of the time. And coupled with this, we have our second kind of bandaging, which is overhang bandaging. Now this overhang bandaging is a little bit of what we saw earlier when the puzzle almost exploded on us, where it almost wanted to do some moves, but didn't quite want to do them. I want to move this, it'll move, but it's really butting up against this piece right here, which is, as you can see, overhanging a little bit over this little green triangle. And that's why it's called overhang bandaging. There are just so many different kinds of overhang bandaging that can happen in this puzzle. Some more severe than others, like this one. I wanna turn this side right here, but this white and red piece is really hanging over there. So I can kind of cheese it through if I really try, but it's probably gonna break things. So with all this being said, how was I able to defeat this beast? Slowly, with patience, and loss of a lot of sanity. Again, getting that first hemisphere kind of in order wasn't too bad, only four to five minutes or so. But as I went on, uh, in the beginning, you're only focusing on one part of the puzzle and you can mess everything else up to get those pieces in order. But as you correct everything on here and move up to the last couple sides, what you're able to move without messing the rest of the puzzle up becomes very limited. This is where last layer algorithms for 3x3 come into play, where you just want to fix a few pieces without messing up the rest of the puzzle. You do that, and you're good. But on this cube, unless you already know algorithms that can work with the bandaging that's happening, which is extremely random, it's very difficult. Now, I, for one, am terrible at making my own algorithms. To get this thing finished, I utilized a more brute force trial and error method of just moving one piece around at a time, seeing what worked, seeing what didn't work. It was awful, it was painful, it was infuriating. But when a piece got into place, boy, did it feel good. And boy, did it feel good when I saw the last axie here, because that one took some time. Again, just trial and error over and over, just trying to get something to work, utilizing just simple three by three commutators that I know that have been modified and now trying to translate them to this. And access alone was probably two and a half, three hours. And many an hour well spent. The Andromeda Cube is a challenge, a real challenge. It's a challenge I can certainly recommend to anyone out there who has solved all the puzzles in their collection and is looking for something different. Again, because this is a shape mod of a puzzle that doesn't exist in its normal form. With the solving process for this puzzle, you're really starting with a mostly blank slate. So there we have it, the Andromeda Cube. I'm certain that this will be the last challenge of this caliber we'll see in a while. This channel will be exclusively 2x2 reconstruction solves in the future. Only, only simple puzzles from here on out.